All right, so this week we're talking about um, lesson six. So we're moving into, you know, we've been talking about variables and whatnot just in general, but we're going to talk more about um, the relationships between them. And we're going to be talking about measurement variables, which remember those are the variables that uh, we also call them quantitative. They take on some sort of value. So um, the first thing we want to talk about is correlation, which is basically, um, this is once again talking about two measurement variables that we find. Um, and it's a, it's a single number that's showing, and so it's the relationship between two variables, but it's a single number that's just basically saying how close these values are to a straight line. Um, so correlation does have to be linear um, in order for it to, for you to use it. You know, it has to have some sort of linear relationship for it to make any sense. Um, and then we also call it strength and direction, meaning, you know, how strength would be how close they are together, and then direction is, um, you know, obviously positive or negative. Um, direction that they're going so for example um like for strength like this uh correlation would have a really high strength because if you as you can see it's they're all very close to like a line when in like this case um you know this would have a lower correlation because they're not as close to the line and then this one's going to be positive because it's going up from left to right you always want to read it from left to right then this is going to have a negative correlation because from left to right it is going um downwards um, and then, yeah, it ranges from negative one to one. And keep in mind that the um, the sign, so like negative just means that it's going um, downwards. Um, and then positive means it's going up. So don't think of it as in like it's a value of negative one. Um, because technically, like negative one is a stronger correlation than like point two, um, just because it's, you want to look for what's closer to one, and then the the sign. So look at the number itself, and then the sign just tells you which direction it's going. So the strength is actually indicated by the number itself, and the direction is indicated by the um, sign, whether it's positive or negative. So make sure you keep that in mind. Okay, and when we're studying, um, when we're doing statistics, uh, there's something called statistical significance. So after we complete all these tests, we're basically trying to decide, you know, if, is this something that, um, you know, is useful for our practice? Is this something that we would want to use to inform future decisions um, that we make in statistics? So um, that's what means the answer we got is probably useful. Um, and then it's saying that it shows that there are differences in the population. So remember, we have our population, take samples from it. And then we're looking for statistical significance within those samples. And then we want to see if um, then those samples that our answer, um, or if it's if we're seeing differences in the sample, if it's statistically significant, then that means that um, we're going to assume that there's some sort of uh, difference in the actual population. And then saying it's not from random sampling error make, basically means that it's unlikely to have occurred in the sample if there's no relationship in the population. So it's basically saying that you know you found this in the sample, um, but and so we think that there is a change. It's not that it just happened by chance. You know, we didn't get these results in the sample and they don't represent the population. That's not what we found. So for it to be statistically significant, it means that probably what we found is going to be useful there. Okay, and something to keep in mind um, is for correlation doesn't e equal causation. So we were just talking about correlation in the last, in the beginning there. So um, when two things are correlated together, it's showing, you know, how close they are to the line, but um, but if you say then, you know, so if they are closely correlated, you know, you could say there's a correlation between this variable and this variable, but just because there is a close correlation doesn't mean that one causes the other. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's not, you know, you can't make those assumptions. Uh, we're making inferences about, you know, how close they are together and how close their relationship is, but we can't say that one causes the other one. Um, Cause once again, so yeah, outliers can come into play. So that means that um, if you have a, a observation that's super far out from your data points um, that, you know, skews your data, that is an issue. Um, and then uh, nonlinear linear relationships don't apply, like I said earlier, for correlation, you do have to make sure that you have a linear relationship. And then also confounding variables could come into play. So once again, if you find that correlation, there may be a correlation, but um, there could be a confounding variable that is the true cause of that correlation. So you can't assume that one causes the other. So that's an important thing to remember in statistics. I have a question. Okay, and then this is just a review of um, what the equation of a line is. So mm -hmm. this is something, you know, you use often just right. um, for different parts in statistics and other math. Um, so uh, if we were to draw this out, so we have the y equals a plus bx, and then all you have to do here is you plug in um, a. So, well, a is going to be your y-intercept here, and then b is going to be your um, slope. 
So that's going to be like your rise over run. So whatever this is, that's going to be B, your slope. And then X is going to be, you know, whatever point you have here on the X axis here. Did you have a question? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? <clears throat> um, do you mean correlation not equaling causation? Or are you meaning it the other way around, like causation not equaling correlation? Because like what we just went over was that correlation doesn't equal causation. Okay, yeah, so um, for example, so if it's like um, the number of drownings goes up with um, the amount of ice cream sales, okay? So that's saying that, you know, as, you know, the more, so let's say that, you know, you look at a span of months or whatever, and the amount of drownings goes up, and then so does the amount of ice cream sales. So you can't say that the amount of ice cream sales increases Hi. Drowning. Okay, that's not. Um, you can't make that assumption, but because there can be a confounding variable, which in this case, um, it's a common example. You use it. It could be that it's summertime, because in the summertime, both, you know, people are in pools more, and people probably buy more ice cream. So there's a confounding variable. So you can't say that, you know, the more ice cream sales are, the more people are drowning. That's like the main idea there. Um, it's just saying you can't make an assumption that they cause one another just because there is a relationship between them just because maybe they both increase at the same time does that make sense no problem all right all right and then another thing to just um keep in mind is um extrapolation so this is a term we used in the statistics when we talk about um if you would use your regression equation that shows some sort of trend and then use it to predict values outside of what um, data that you actually have. So um, this could be in terms of if you have, it, like if you found a correlation between like uh, just two different things within like a certain time period. So we'll say from like 2000 to like 2005 and you found a correlation between you know, over time for like the, the increase in like, we'll say the increase of like, um, we'll say like, I don't know, like people getting their master's degrees, okay? So extrapolation would be if I went out here and said, oh, well, that means that we can assume that in um, 2020, that like this many people are going to be getting their master's degrees because that trend was going up. That's extrapolation because we can't say that because we only had this data here. So we cannot extrapolate out here and make assumptions about this stuff. That doesn't make sense. And also logically interpreting your y-intercept is another thing. Um, so if you think about it, if we had a graph like this, um, and let's see if it was talking about maybe, um, you know, day, the, the day of the week or something and temperature or how many days you've been like in the winter and then temperature. So like you have like one, two, three, four, whatever. But then for, z for zero, it ends up being like down here, you know, but this isn't what your um, actual temperature is because you only have data from like these points on, you know, you can't assume that just because you have data there that it continues down onto the Y intercept. So the Y intercept isn't always going to be um, a data point that makes sense. So that would be illogically interpreting your y-intercept and once again it is extrapolating because you're going farther away from the data that you already have um, present to you. All right, so let's do some review questions. So our first one is, so consider the following three statements regarding outliers. So outliers may be created by errors in data entry. Sometimes outliers are the most interesting points in the data set um, or a single outlier can dramatically decrease the correlation in a data set. So which of the statements are true? So go ahead and try to answer this one and we will review it then together.
Yep, you're correct. These are actually all true. So, um, so good job. Yep, because these are all um, truth statements. Outliers can be created by errors in the data entry. Like it wasn't actually a data point that you found. Um, and then outliers can be the most interesting point because it's showing something that deviates from the norm. And then um, the third one is also correct. You know, it can dramatically decrease the correlation depending on you know where that outlier is. So good job. Answer is all three of them. All right, for the second one, a correlation of negative one is possible in which of the following situations? So read through A through E, then let me know what you think the answer is and we will review it together. Okay, so for this one, we want to look at the fact that, remember, we want to first look at the value um, and then the um, sign. So the value is one. So that means that it's a perfect linear relationship. Um, so that's the first thing to keep in mind. So um, that's going to be the value of one. Um, and then our value of, um, so okay, yeah. And then the negative is then saying that it's a negative linear relationship. So perfect negative linear relationship. And then, um, so yeah, so then if we go ahead through and we look through the examples that make sure that, that meet that, it's gonna be C. So um, not positive, and then remember correlation always has to be linear, so that's why these can't be true. This is obviously not true, and then once again, not positive. So yeah, our answer is gonna be C there. So good job. All right, let's do another one. So the results of a survey show that on average, as the amount of time spent sleeping the night before increases, so does the midterm exam score in a math class, which of the following is true. So try this one out and we will review it together. Great job, yep, so this is talking about, um, once again, that correlation doesn't equal causation. Um, so just to review, correlation does not equal causation. Um, so, you know, it's showing that there is um, a correlation between, you know, the amount of time spent sleeping, and then um, sleeping, sleeping, and then the scores, they also increase. Um, so that, that is a correlation, but we can't conclude that it causes that. Um, that's what this is saying. So that's not true. So that's why, well, C is our answer because um, that's what we can't do. So, so yeah, that is the true one. So good job. All right, I think we have one more. All right, so which of these, for which of these paired variables could one find a correlation? So try this one out and we will review it.
<laughs> All right, good. Yep. So the answer here is going to be E. Um, so because if we look, remember, correlation is going to be between two measurement variables. So they have to be quantitative. Um, they both have to be quant okay. Why can't I draw? They both have to be quantitative variables. Um, so in this case, um, all of them, so height and weight, they're both quantitative, age and IQ, both quantitative, and then hours and numerical score are both quantitative. Um, gender and belief of love of first sight, these are both um, categorical, which is why that's not the correct answer. We can't use that one. So our answer is gonna be E here for A, C, and D. Yay. All right, good job. So that's all we got for tonight. So um, obviously you can go check out these recordings and the rest of them on the YouTube channel. Our next group review will be on Thursday, uh, next Thursday at uh, already March, if I'm correct on that, I think, um, at 8.30. And then if you have any other questions for me, type them in the chat box. If not, you guys are good to know for night. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're awesome too. Have a good night. <laughs>